Now, let's now start with vectors. This is actually your page. This is actually on page 21 of your notes. Okay, vectors and scalars, you have learned it at all level, so I will not talk, I mean, touch much about it, just a quick recap. Okay, scalars has both magnitude, okay, sorry, scalars has only magnitude but not direction. But if we look at vector, it has both magnitude and direction. Okay, so some, some of these examples are given to you, you can go and read, okay, but I'm sure you're familiar with it. Okay, then uh, one thing I want to highlight to you is negative vector. Okay, if you actually want to you know, talk about negative vectors, when we talk about negative vectors, we simply take one of the vectors and then we just flip it around. Okay, then, then that's when we actually get a negative vectors. Okay, so basically this is actually a positive vector. If we actually put negative, it becomes the opposite direction, that's all. Okay, we will come to this when we do uh, subtraction of vectors. Okay, so addition of vectors, right? Okay, vectors are like tough. Okay, so when we actually talk about you know, adding two vectors, let's say A and B, okay, no, sorry, A and B, okay, then let's say we get our resultant vector R. Okay, I think one of the uh, common methods that I hear from some of you during lessons is using the tip to tail or head to tail method. So, for example, if I have A to A and B vectors, if I want to add them together, okay, basically I will put A, okay, let me erase this and start over again. So, let's say I draw my A vector first, okay, then B vector, right, I'll actually put, of course, a range head of A, like, well, point it or arrange it such that it touches the tail of vector B. Okay, since you know this is the start of A, this is the end of B, okay, then I will join them and this will be my um, sum of vector A plus B. Okay, that's how we do the tip to tail or head to tail method, whichever you are more familiar in calling it. So this method of vector addition is fine. We'll continue to use this. Okay, a lot of time we will need or oh, the question will actually give you angle theta. We can of course use um uh, what do you call it? Cosine rule to actually solve. Okay, cosine rule, you have your C square equals to A square plus B square minus 2 AB cosine theta, where this is the theta. Okay, and of course, this is C. Okay, so this one, we will use it quite often. Okay, let me move on. Okay, this one is just the steps. Okay, if you look at page 22, right, halfway here, okay, suddenly we talk about vector subtraction. Okay, so, so far at O level, I'm sure you have been doing vector additions. No one, or you have not seen any methods of subtracting vectors. Okay, just now remember we mentioned about negative vector. Negative vector simply means flipping the original vectors the other way around 180 degrees. So that becomes a negative vector. So for example, okay, if I have vector A and then I want to subtract vector B, okay, let's start from scratch. Okay, what I first have to do is I have to first flip vector B so that I want to convert it to negative B vector. Okay, then from there, I will actually just use my normal head to tail method. Okay, let me draw A first. Okay, vector A pointing to the right. Okay, because I want to add negative B vector. Okay, so what happens is I will need to actually put this negative B, which is pointing to the top right, over here. So this is actually negative vector. Okay, when these two are together, I have my starting point, I have my ending point. Again, I will draw a double arrow, which is my resultant. This resultant is basically the sum of A plus negative B vector. And this is actually equivalent to A minus B. Okay, that's how we subtract vectors. We subtract vectors often because we look at change, change in things. Okay, in physics, we like to see the change. Later on, in the next uh, few pages, I will show you what it means. Okay, so you can go and read up on all this diagram. This actually kind of shows you, I mean, explain a bit more detail for you. Okay, let's move on to page 23. Okay, parallelogram method. Okay, we rarely use it now. Okay, at A level, we don't really use it. Okay, this is kind of not recommended. You can still use, but there will be questions whereby you, you may find yourself getting stuck. So, not recommended. Okay, I shall move on. Okay, now this one. Okay, at A level, right, we may add up to five vectors. If you have multiple vectors, for example, in this case, four vectors, okay, you have S1, S2, S3, S4. Of course, you realize you can arrange, um, you know, tip to tail or head to tail for all the four. Okay, so that you end up getting your resultant, which is given by S net. Okay, but... Okay, you realize that it's going to be very complicated. Okay, if you want to get exact the exact magnitude of the resultant, okay, by calculation, for example, cosine rule, it's going to be very tedious. Okay, so <coughs> I wrote here, isn't it messy? Basically, there's a faster method. It's basically on page 30, which I will actually touch on uh, pretty soon. Okay, let's move on. Okay, example 11 basically is something called resultant displacement. Okay, so nothing much. This is just an example to illustrate, you know, two vectors. You first walk in a certain direction, then followed by another. This one going to read through. This is actually very standard. Okay, mm, nothing much. This one uses both sine rule and also cosine rule. Okay, you can see which one, you know, uh, 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 suits you better. Nah. Okay, sometimes we may not need to use both of these rules, but, you know, if you are well versed in both of them, it will be advantageous because certain times using both of them will help to speed things up. Okay, now this one, this example 12, resultant velocity is something that is fairly new. Okay, um, when will it, when will we actually use this? Okay, for example, when things are moving in flowing rivers, or when uh, let's say air travel it through, you no know, moving wind, moving air. Okay, or even when you are working on travel later. So what is this used for? For example, okay, let's go back to this example twelve. Okay, there's actually water flowing towards the right. Okay, I highlight yellow. Okay, then the speed of the boat in still water. This is actually in still water. So this is actually in still water. It will actually move at four meter per second vertically. Okay, so what happens is because the river is flowing, you no, know, towards the right. Okay, the boat will actually therefore be riding on this water that's flowing to the right. 
okay, while propelling itself uh, vertically upwards on the paper. Okay, so what happens is basically you will get water flow three meter per second to the right, and then four meter per second is the speed of the boat. Okay, then end up you get your resultant velocity of vectors, which is this. Okay, so this one you because it's right angle, you can simply use Pythagoras. Okay, to actually solve no issues. Okay, angle wise, if you let's say they ask you to find out this angle, it's basically just tangent theta equals to three over four, opposite over hypotenuse. Sorry, opposite over adjacent. Let me write down opposite over adjacent. Okay, okay, you can go and read this solution. Okay, but this is in just what I've just explained. Okay, then this one. Okay, this is an extension question. Okay, so on page twenty six, right? How does it? How do they extend? They're asking you the direction that the boat should be steer. Okay, what's the objective? The objective is to travel the shortest distance. Okay, they even explain. Oh, means that it's actually in the direction perpendicular to the bank. Means that I want to travel, you know, in this red dash line direction. Okay, so now my resultant has to be vertical. Okay, so what I'll do is basically, as drawn here, this is the resultant. It has to be vertical. This speed of the water is unchanged. Okay, it cannot be changed, of course. Okay, because it's fixed. The water, the river is flowing to the right. Okay, it's again right angle triangle. So therefore, my four meter per second, my boat has to be steer uh, uh, upstream. That means opposite, slightly opposite to the direction of water flow. Why so? If you actually look at this, right, it, it simply means that okay, the boat is actually moving, you know, upstream. But because of the flow of water, it will bring it. it I mean, the sum of the vector will, will make it such that the resultant is pointing vertically upwards. Okay, let me erase the green part. Okay, so this is your resultant. Okay, nothing much. This one, you, you can use your uh, Torcaso to actually solve, okay, to find the resultant velocity of the boat as well as angle theta. Okay, so trigo is pretty common in, at, in, I mean, for physics at A levels. Okay, let's move on to page 27. So page 27, we need to cover this thing called change in velocity as well as relative velocity. These are two applications of vector subtraction. Just now I mentioned to you, no subtraction. First time you see it, okay, I'm going to show you where is it or why do we apply it. Okay, change in velocity. Okay, in, in physics, right? Okay, we, we, we talk about the change in quantity very often. Okay, for example, let's say change in temperature, change in speed. Okay, then we will always take final minus initial. Okay, then if we actually apply to velocity, for example, I want to find the change in uh, velocity. Okay, by the way, I'm writing this triangle here. This triangle, right, okay, as explained here, actually represents change. Okay, so it represents change. It's a grid symbol at delta. Okay, so what's, okay, so, so basically this is just FYI. Huh? So it's actually a capital delta. So we always say delta V, delta uh, velocity, etc. Okay, so back to this change in velocity, it will be final velocity minus initial, right? So let's say we put it into vector. Huh? So delta v, I'll use uh, letter v for velocity, will be equal to final velocity minus initial velocity, right? You realize these are two vectors, and it's a subtraction of vectors. So that is why you know, knowing how to uh, knowing this change in velocity or knowing how to operate subtraction of velocity, sorry, subtraction of vectors is important. Okay, so you can actually start this equation. Okay, so this equation basically tells you final minus initial. Okay, need not be change in velocity. Okay, so it's just any change. This can be okay. This can be any quantity. Okay, any physical quantity when you when you're asked to find change in that quantity, it is always going to be final minus initial. Please do not swap the order around. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so this one. Okay, for, so in, so this one example example thirteen. This is my initial, and this is my final. Okay, so if I actually want to find change in velocity, basically I have to take V final minus V initial. Okay, so since it's a subtraction, right, it is actually the same as V final plus a negative V initial vector. Okay, let me draw out the vector diagram for you. So initial, so final first, huh? so let me draw final, V final. Okay, but I need to add negative initial vector. The initial velocity, right, is actually pointing to the right, so negative VI will actually be pointing to the left. No issues. Okay, therefore, now I can draw my resultant of these two. The resultant of these two is basically final minus initial, which is equivalent to change in velocity. Okay, so this part here is actually my change in velocity. Okay, of course this right angle, I can of course now find um, the value. This is actually 10, this is 8. Okay, you can actually look at you know, the working here to actually see what is the value. But very important, you understand how I actually approach this. Okay, uh, just to recap, I actually wrote down this. It's basically final velocity plus negative initial. I'm going to draw them out in you know, this vector diagram. Or, so that I can actually use Pythagoras theorem. Okay, I won't be able to use Pythagoras all the time, but because this factor involves right angle to triangle, therefore Pythagoras is the easiest way. Okay, if not, I might have to use or end up using cosine rule, sine rule to actually help me solve my question. Okay, let's move on to 28. Okay, we're done with change in velocity. Now let's move on to relative velocity. Relative velocity, right? I wrote here examples, question mark. We actually experience relative velocity all the time, okay, in daily life. Okay, I think the most common is for example, if you are running, um, let's say you're running 2.4 on the track, okay? <coughs> so if your friend is actually running same speed as you, side by side. 
okay, what would be your friend's velocity to you? We call it relative velocity of your friend with respect to you. It will be zero because your friend is constantly, you know, just on the right or beside you, okay? And he, he or she, because having the same velocity is going to, you know, uh, relative to you, they appear not to be moving. Okay, one other example I can think of is, for example, if a train is actually moving this way, let's say you're on a train, okay, train, huh? okay, and then there's actually an opposite train that is actually coming this way. Okay, we are, I make a... Let me put it this way so that it fits Singapore's direction. Okay, let's say another train is actually moving this way. Okay, each of them will actually move, let's say, at a max speed of 80 kilometers per hour. Okay, so if actually when they pass through pilots at each other, if you recall observing the other train when you are on board, let's say the red color train, okay, you always feel that the other train is moving really fast. Okay, that is your experience of relative velocity. That means if I ask about what's the relative velocity of red train with respect to blue train, okay, the red train will appear to be moving at 160 kilometers per hour. Okay. There is actually a formula to actually talk about this. If you have velocity of B relative to A, we call it subscript B, uh, subscript V, sorry, V subscript B, B A, given here. Okay. I will actually take B minus A. Okay. Again, it's a subtraction of vector. Okay. But nothing much. Okay. Let me use this. Okay. Let's say this is A, huh? and then this train is B. Okay. Let's say now I want to find relative velocity of A, okay, relative to B. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll take velocity A minus velocity B. Okay, so if I actually turn it into a vector diagram, basically B A is actually pointing down. Okay, the negative V B, right, because V B is actually moving up. So negative V B, oops, sorry, this A, negative V B is actually also pointing down. This negative. Okay, therefore, this gives me a resultant or a relative velocity of 80 plus 80 because they are moving in the same direction. Okay, this proves the point of what we observe. This is actually in line with how we observe. Okay, so you now in short, remember this equation. When we have velocity, uh, relative velocity, we always take the, uh, let's say A relative to B, I'll take velocity A, subtract velocity B. Okay, this example 14 is an example, very quick example. You can go and read through on your own. I shall not do that. Okay, then, okay, vector resolution. This is about resolving vectors. Resolving vectors can be, it's actually quite important. Okay, so, uh, okay, vector resolution this is something that is extremely important. You may want to just highlight and start this page, this page 30. Okay, the thing is, a lot of things in physics because it involves vectors, okay, and at A-level physics, because the vectors involved can be quite complex, they are not uh, collinear, they are, they are not all acting in the same direction, they tend to be acting in some unknown direction, so we actually resolve them uh, pretty often. Okay, now I'll explain what is resolving means. Okay, so let's say this yellow, okay, I have yellow, this is the original vector, let's call it R, okay, basically R, right, can be broken down into two components, okay, I call it the X component and the Y component. What do I mean by break, break down into two components? Okay, basically these two components, right, when add together, so using vector sum, they will give me my original vector r. So, for example, if I draw here this vector x, okay, I will add to vector r. Oh, sorry, the y component of vector r. Okay, then if you actually join the start and the end, since they are add together, this will exactly give me vector r. So any vectors, right, can actually always be broken or no represented by two components, and these two components are perpendicular. Okay, that's what resolving means. Means that I'm trying to find out the components. Okay, that are perpendicular to each other. They mix up. That is also, you know, that they can actually make up this original vector. Okay, the, the rationale for this is because if I actually know all the, for example, all the horizontal x direction components, I can add them up easily. Since they're all pointing in the same direction, then I will look at all the y component. Okay, if I get gather all the y component and then add them up, okay, I can now find the net y component. Okay, by using the x and the y component, okay, then that's when I can actually find my resultant comp you know, component or resultant vectors. Okay, because this is so, this is actually because we make use of a lot of vectors in physics at, at, at A level and beyond. Okay, now, so nothing much, X and Y component. Oh, okay, maybe I'll explain a bit on um, the subscript. We always put subscript, so please, please mm, make it a habit so that you won't get confused. Okay, so this one, right, to find the component, nothing much. Typically, we will get the angle, for example, angle theta. So, Rx component, okay, let me drop the arrow sign. So, let's say magnitude, right? It's just R, will just be R cosine theta. Then, Ry is just R sine theta, right? Okay, so, oh, also given here. So you can read through the step, which is what I've outlined for you. Okay, we use a bit of Pythagoras theorem as well. Okay, quite often. Okay, so for example, AB, right? This is actually one example. AB, I can actually find out. Let me try to use. Okay, let me use blue first. Okay, the x component of A. So you can write AX. Okay, and then I will also resolve B to find the BX component. Okay, you realize that they are both pointing in the same direction. So by adding them up, I know the resultant uh, x component for C. Okay, and let's look at Y. Okay, the vertical component. You no, know, this is a y component. This is E Y component. Okay, by adding them up, I will also get, of course, the resolved components. Okay. 
Okay, so you can look through these steps. Basically, this outlines how we actually add them up. Okay, part by part by each of the direction. X component, we will put them together. Y component, put them together. Okay, the example for 15, mm, I'll leave it to you. This one involves subtracting vectors, but because they are actually you no know, directed opposite. For example, let me just highlight this. Okay, A, Y component is actually directed upwards. Okay, but B, Y component is directed downwards. So if I actually find out about my sum of C, Y, this is actually A, Y value minus B, Y value. Okay, so if you actually read here, basically here, they also illustrate the Y component is actually negative. Okay, so when I add together, right, basically it is equivalent to subtracting la, in that sense. Okay, that's all. Go and try this mini test and um, you can actually find the solutions of this mini test in the SLS lesson. Okay, this will be measurement lesson C. Okay, that's all for vectors. Thank you.